But I'm back and we're ready for part two of chapter five, which is on page 51. The source of the sense of life. All right, praise the Lord, saints. Where does the sense of life we are speaking of come from? From what is it produced? It is produced from the things we have gained through regeneration, the life of God, the law of life, the Holy Spirit, Christ, and God. The life of God, the law, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, Christ, and God cause us to have a feeling within, and this feeling is what we call the sense of life. Every life has its feeling. Furthermore, the stronger life is, the keener its feelings are. The life of God is the strongest life. Therefore, when this life is in us, it causes us not to have feelings, but to have strong feelings. <clears throat> since the law of life is derived from life it also has feeling therefore this law which is in us causes us to have feeling especially when we don't disobey it for like example when our body is normal there is hardly any special feeling but when it becomes sick there is a strong feeling and this strong feeling occurs when we disobey the law which is then the um the body similarly when we obey the law of life it does not give us much feeling but when we disobey disobey it it gives very distinct feelings the holy spirit an ointment is anointing and moving in us christ living in us with activity and god is working in us all three are in us with activity and action. They are not quite, quiet, no, sorry, they're not quite, sorry, I messed up on the word. They're not quiet and motionless. Therefore, they all cause us to have feelings. Thus, whether it is, it is it be life of God or the law of life or the Holy Spirit, Christ, and God within us, they all cause us to have feelings. And they are mingled together in giving us feelings. Therefore, the feelings derived from all five are not five kinds of feelings, but one feeling, that is, the sense of life, which we are speaking of. Sorry, I itch. I have a lot of, if you, so if you see me do this, I have allergies, I have a dog, I'm allergic. It's just, it's just crazy. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, feeling it on my iPad, so, and I'm tilting it sideways, like you don't, you know, so sometimes I want to look up there, but then I have to look here because that's where the camera is right there, like on the side, right side. But if I tilt it back up, it's on. Oh, yeah. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> Keep this going. The Holy Spirit, and as an ointment, is anointing and moving in us. Christ is living in us with activity, and God is working in us. All three in us with activity and action. Oh, that's what I just read. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Say, I kept on looking up there. I apologize. Thus, whether it be the... I already, I already read that part too. Okay. Why is it that the feelings derived from the five... The five... It's the life of God, the law of the life, the Holy Spirit, Christ, and God are just one kind of feeling? And why is this feeling the sense of life? It is because... The Holy Spirit, Christ, and God are the trying God. The life of God is God himself, and the law of life comes out from this life of God. Therefore, strictly speaking, these five are one. Are one. So the five senses are one. Okay? <clears throat> Therefore, when they are in us, the feelings they give us are of one kind. The reason that this feeling... Is the feeling of life is that it is derived from the trying God of life, the life of God and the law of life. The main purpose of the trying God in us is to be our life, and this life includes the law of life. Therefore, the feelings which we, they cause us to have are derived from life and belong to life. Hence, they are the sense of life. This sense is one, but it has five aspects. It is derived <clears throat> from the life of God, and it is derived from the law of life of God. <clears throat> hmm. 
Therefore, it has the nature of the life of God and the function of the law of life, of God's life as well. At the same time, this sense is also derived from the Holy Spirit, Christ, and God. Therefore, it continue, contains the element of the Holy Spirit anointing in us, the element of Christ living in us, and the element of God working and accomplishing his will in us. Because of these various aspects, this sense is rich, strong, and keen. It is even richer, stronger, and even keener than the best senses among the, the unbelievers. The best feeling that unbelievers are believers can have are but the created sense of goodness in humanity. I mean, oh, in, in human beings, not humanity, human beings. But besides the created sense of goodness, this sense of love is a divine sense added into us by the things which we have gained through regeneration. <clears throat> when in ugh, what then is the function or use of this sense of life? Two more. The function or use of the sense of life is to let us know continuously where we are living. Are we living in the natural life or in the life of the spirit? Are we living in the flesh or are we living in the spirit? This is what the sense of life makes known to us continuously. It is for this that we have the sense of life. Therefore, the sense of life in us guides us, guides and proves us. If we follow the sense of life, we follow the guidance God gives us. And at the same time, we receive a verification of where we are living. Now we shall apply what we have said. The sense of death makes known to us that we are not living in the spirit, but in the flesh. Once we have the sense of death, we should know that we are not in the spirit, but in the flesh. The sense of death includes weakness, emptiness, depression, darkness, and pain. Once we have such feelings, it means the sense of life in us is making known that we are already not right, that we are already not living in the spirit, but in the flesh. <clears throat> Then, what feeling does the sense of life give us, so that we know we are right before God and living in the Spirit? It gives us the feeling of life and peace, or in other words, it makes us feel strong, satisfied, lively, bright, and comfortable. Whenever we feel strong, satisfied, lively, bright, and comfortable, within we have inward proof that we are right before God and that we are living in the Spirit. Very good. Therefore, the sense of life within us is a great function. It is there continuously leading us, making it known to us where we should be, live, and it continuously proves to us where we are now living. It is this sense which leads us on, a, on in life. It is also the sense which continuously proves and reveals to us our real condition in life. Hence, it is our guide and it's a testimony for them. Whenever it causes us to feel inward life and peace, it proves that we have no problem in life. Whenever it makes, whenever it makes us feel void of life and peace, it proves we have some problem in life. <clears throat> you know what, dog? You can just wait. Sorry. You may say that you do not have the sense of life and peace within you, and neither do you have the sense of no life or no peace. You do not have the sense of being strong, satisfied, lively, bright, or comfortable, and neither do you have the sense of not being strong, satisfied, lively, bright, or comfortable. To be in such a condition proves you have a problem. You must positively have a sense of life and peace. We must feel strong, satisfied, lively, bright, and comfortable, and at ease within, within all as well. <clears throat> Although it, at times God wants to lead us out of our feelings and cause us to enter, as it were, into carrot cave, into a cave, yet even in the cave we still have the sense of life. And peace in our deepest part. Although the outward feelings are are gone, there is still the feeling of life and peace in the deepest part. Ooh. Life and peace are the positive feelings which the sense of life gives us within, thus proving that our condition in life is normal. Weakness and uneasiness are the negative feelings which the sense of life gives us within, thus proving that we have some problems in life. The feelings both of weakness and uneasiness are the sense of death. The sense of death definitely comes from mining the flesh and touching anything outside of God. Every sense of death proves that we are more or less mining the flesh and that we have touched the, to some extent the things outside of God. Therefore, whether we are mining the flesh, whether we are living in the spirit, 
And whether we are touching God all depends upon love and peace or weakness and uneasiness within us. If there is life and peace within, it proves that we are living in the Spirit. We are touching God. If we feel weak and uneasy within, it proves that we are fleshly minding, fleshly minded and are touching things outside of God. It is not necessary but that a Christian should never feel weak. But even when he feels weak, he should still feel strong. He feels weak because he has come to know himself. He feels strong because he touches Christ and knows Christ as his life. If we continually feel only weakness and never feel strong, something is wrong. The apostle said that whenever he, whenever he is weak, then he is strong. A strong person, even though he feels his own weaknesses, does not mind that weakness. If we always mind our weakness and cannot be strong, it proves we have a problem. It may be that we are more or less in the flesh, for weakness is a sense of death, and the sense of death always comes from minding the flesh. A Christian can be can can be weak yet feel strong. He can feel pain yet have the sense of peace. He feels pain because he meets tribulation from without. He has the sense of peace because he meets the Lord and touches the Lord from within. <clears throat> if we meet tribulation from without, yet in really we have no peace, something is wrong. The Lord says that in the world we have tribulation, but in him we have peace. That's in John 16.33. One who lives in the Lord, or one who lives in the Spirit, may meet t much tribulation from without, yet inwardly he still has peace. Otherwise, it proves that he is not living in the Spirit. If we lack inward peace while in tribulation, it proves that we are not living in the Spirit. Then if while having no tribulation, we also have no inward peace, it is even more of proof that we are not living in the Spirit. Therefore, concerning our condition in life, whether we are fresh, fleshly minded or spiritually minded, whether we are living in the flesh or living in the spirit, is proved and made known to us through the sense of life. Okay? It is through this kind of proving that the sense of life gives us guidance from within. Only if we follow the guidance of this kind of proving can we live in life. Therefore, if we desire to go on in life, we must pay attention to the proving and leading which the sense of life gives us from within. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. We're now on chapter six for next time. It's already almost 13 minutes. About to be. All right. Praise the Lord, saints um, and everybody. I hope you have a blessed day. Remember, put your, set your mind on the things above, the things of Christ. Don't let your mind become empty. Does that make sense? Don't let your mind become empty because when you your mind is empty, it gives ground for the enemy to, it gives ground for evil, nasty thoughts to come in. You know, demonic thoughts, bad thoughts, evil thoughts, horrible thoughts, which do not bring you any peace. So, set your mind on the things above. Set your mind on the things of Christ, the person of Christ, Christ himself, who lives in your regenerated spirit praise the lord saints i love you with the love of the lord and i hope you have a blessed and wonderful day